In this video, we're going to be discussing two important balance and stability tests that are often used in the assessment of the neurological population, and those are the Romberg and sharpened Romberg tests. Now, these two balance tests are not definitive diagnoses for these conditions. However, they are part of the assessment for sensory ataxia, for example, in the case of cerebellar damage. In the case of posterior column damage, specifically to the DCML pathway, remember that's dorsal columns, medial lemniscus pathway, and also in some vestibular conditions such as vertigo or Meniere's disease. And the purpose of these two tests is to determine the extent to which proprioceptive and or vestibular deficits compromise balance. So first up, we have the Romberg test. To perform the Romberg test, the patient will be standing with their arms crossed and feet together, so a narrow base of support. And first, they're going to do it with their eyes open and attempt to maintain that position for 30 seconds. Once they've finished that, they're then going to keep the exact same position but close their eyes, again attempting to maintain that position for 30 seconds. So eyes open 30 seconds, eyes close 30 seconds. Now, a very important note here. When the patient's eyes are open, they are able to rely on all three balance systems to help maintain their balance. And those systems are vision, proprioception, and vestibular function. But when the patient closes their eyes, that eliminates visual input. So now the brain has to rely only on a combination of vestibular function and proprioception to maintain balance. If there is an issue with proprioception and or vestibular function, the patient's probably going to have a really hard time maintaining balance with the eyes closed, but not so much with the eyes open because they're able to rely on visual input. So let's suppose the patient could do all 30 seconds with the eyes open, but then with eyes closed they only lasted three or four seconds. To me, that would suggest that there's a problem either with proprioception or vestibular function, and then it's up to you to dive deeper into those and figure out which it is. Next, we're going to have the patient perform the sharpened Romberg test. This is done almost identically to the Romberg test, with one exception. Instead of the feet being together, now they're going to be in tandem. So one foot is in front of the other. In this example, my right foot is in front, my left foot is in back. And the toes of my left foot need to be in contact just barely with the heel of my right foot. Again, I'm going to be standing with my arms crossed. Starting with eyes open, attempting to maintain this position for 30 seconds. And then you would have the patient perform the Sharp and Romberg with the eyes closed and attempt to maintain that position for 30 seconds. Obviously, the Sharp and Romberg is going to be the more difficult of the two because the feet are in the tandem position. I don't care who you are, that is a more difficult stance to maintain, especially with the eyes closed. It's even going to be challenging for young, strong, healthy people. And so, that being said, the only reason you should give the Sharp and Romberg test would be if you give the regular Romberg test, and they last the full 30 seconds with the eyes open, and full 30 seconds with the eyes closed, but for whatever reason you're still suspicious of a proprioceptive and or vestibular deficit. One more note on the Sharp and Romberg test. One common compensation that patients will do is they will put more weight on their back foot, particularly their back heel. In reality, the weight distribution should be approximately equal on both feet. So most of the time, in order to perform this absolutely correctly, the patient will probably have to shift weight forward. So getting weight off of their back heel and more onto their front foot so that it's equal between both. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.